Hi, my name is Dr. Leela Landowski, and today we're going to be talking about the blood-brain barrier and the lymphatic system. So the brain is our control centre, right? So it's controlling everything that we're doing, whether we're aware of it or not. And it needs a very consistent supply of oxygen and nutrients. It has to operate in this very strict range um, in order to control the body and do it in a regular and consistent way. Now, the contents of your blood, as we know, changes massively throughout the course of the day. For example, following a meal, or following stressful situations and hormones being released. So there's a lot of flux happening in terms of what is in the contents of your blood. Um, now the brain is very sensitive to changes, so we don't want to have all that influence from the blood affecting the way that the brain works. So the way the brain controls the micro environment of um, itself is through the blood-brain barrier. So the blood-brain barrier is what's basically controlling that little micro environment within the brain. So the blood-brain barrier looks a little bit like this. So um, on the left hand side we have a typical looking blood vessel which we would find throughout the body. So we've got these cells which are called um, endothelial cells which basically compose the wall of that blood capillary. So the difference with um, capillaries in the majority of the brain is it has what we call this blood-brain barrier. So the blood-brain barrier um, is very similar in some respects. So we have these endothelial cells wrapping around the blood vessel and what's different about them is they have a lot of these tiny little um, junctions between them. We call these tight junctions and these tight junctions mean the endothelial cells are really tightly opposed to one another which stops um, solutes from moving in from the blood vessel out into the parenchyma, so into the, into the brain tissue. So that's the first barrier. We also have another cell type which isn't pictured here and they tend to wrap around the um, blood vessel and we call these um, cells parasites and what parasites really do is they they're really sensitive to what's inside the blood vessel and they help um, constrict that capillary or open it back up again so they're involved more in um, regulation of blood flow now a key player in the blood-brain barrier is the astrocytes so astrocytes are one of the key brain cells now um, you can see here that the astrocyte is in the top of the view, but we have these what we call astrocyte end feet. And these astrocyte end feet literally wrap themselves around this blood vessel, providing another layer of barrier that prevents um, solutes from coming in through that blood vessel out into the brain tissue. So um, this will give you an idea of um, how this blood brain barrier works. Now where things get interesting is when we come to the glymphatic system. So you might be wondering, I've never heard of the glymphatic system before. And that's because it's only really been um, talked about or, or named and discovered in, in recent years. So the glymphatic system is basically our brain's waste removal system, our brain's brainwashing system, if you will. So we know that throughout our body, we have the lymphatic system. And what that lymphatic system is doing is essentially, essentially wicking away waste and excess fluid between our cells throughout our body. Now the brain doesn't have a lymphatic system, but what it does have is a glymphatic system. So that is um, lymphatics made from glial cells, hence the name glymphatic, glial lymphatic. Now this glymphatic system is only really active when we are sleeping. So during the course of the day, your brain is creating metabolic waste. Um, some of this comes leaks out into your CSF, but much of it is staying within that brain tissue, that brain parenchyma, as we call it. Now, when we're sleeping, this glymphatic system becomes visible. So if I can just show you here this diagram. So on the right hand side, we have a typical um, blood, black, blood brain barrier. So we've got the, um, you know, we've got the endothelial cells. Um, this might be a, uh, an arteriole because it's got smooth muscle around it as well. And we've got these astrocyte end feet wrapping around it, creating this really nice blood brain barrier. Now, when we are asleep, we have this gap forming between the outside of this blood vessel 
and these astrocyte end feet. So this becomes a perivascular space. So this is where this um, glymphatic system appears. So fluid um, has the opportunity then to leak out into this space and is wicked out of the brain essentially through the CSF. So this system is really important because we know that, for example, um, as I mentioned, there's metabolic waste that's building up in your brain, but a lot of other proteins that have been implicated in disease. So for example, we know that Alzheimer's disease, there's a particular type of protein called beta amyloid, this sticky protein, which essentially seems to be building up in the brain. Whether it actually causes Alzheimer's disease is uncertain at this point, but it is certainly implicated with Alzheimer's disease. Now we know that when you're sleeping, this beta amyloid gets taken out of the brain through the glymphatic system. So we know that the glymphatic system has really important implications in health and disease. So it's only active, well, it's mostly active when we're sleeping. So if you're not sleeping, you're not getting rid of that waste. So pro tip, make sure you get your eight hours sleep at home.